Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Kibler and I am a materials and process engineer at GE Additive. Today I'll be addressing the myth that all parts in Additive are okay without a stress relief heat treat cycle. So in additive manufacturing, heat treat cycles are very important to get the final material, uh, material properties that are required for your components. Each of the three different modalities that we'll address today are laser powder bed fusion, electron beam powder bed fusion, and binder jet. And each of these different processes will require different types of heat treat cycles. In laser powder bed fusion, it's a layer by layer process in which metal powder is melted with a laser in, uh, in different layers that are on the order of 25 to, to 75 microns in size. And in each of those layers, there's a rapid melting and cooling process that occurs from the laser. So as a result of that, there are a lot of residual stresses that are built up in the part. And this can lead to distortion or cracking when you go to take that part off of the build plate. Uh, since that in laser, the part is actually welded to the build plate that it's built upon. So we perform a stress relief heat treat cycle at high temperatures to resolve all those internal residual stresses and therefore reduce the uh, distortion and potential for cracking when you take it off the build plate. So now I'll turn it over to Dan to address uh, electron beam powder bed fusion and binder jet. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm Dan, another metallurgist with GE Additive's material and process team. I'm going to pick up with binder jet and electron beam with respect to stress relief. When it comes to our electron beam machines, those actually operate in the build chamber at a much higher temperature than the laser does. And so they stress relief in situ. It is very, very common for us to not require a post-process stress relief on electron beam builds at all. The same can actually be said for binder jet because it's not a uh, beam-based additive manufacturing technique, but instead a jetting version, where the only heat we input into the process is from the walls of the build chamber and also from the bottom. There's also a series of infrared lamps that pass over during their recoat, but even the summation of all of this heat doesn't induce res residual stresses into our parts. The strange thing about binder jet is its sintering process, whereas the electron beam and the laser processes don't actually require a sintering, because our parts are only between 50 and 60% dense, they need to be consolidated in a sinter cycle. So while we don't require a stress relief for binder jet, it does receive its very own heat treat cycle unique to that modality. I'm gonna send it back to Lindsay to give us a wrap. Thanks, Dan. So in conclusion, Stress relief and other heat treat cycles are really important for additive parts. So after stress relief, especially on the laser side, we often recommend other types of heat treat processes as well, such as HIP, which is hot isostatic pressing, or solution and age cycles. And each of those cycles can be tailored to the particular alloy and the particular application in mind. You'll hear more about HIP from Mike in a, in a different video. For solution and age, these processes are important for balancing the overall material properties and setting the microstructure to a stable state so that you can use it for your intended application. So overall, stress relief is really important for laser powder bed fusion, but maybe not quite as necessary for electron beam and binder bed.